I'd like to thank <clears throat> President Holland for that generous introduction. Too bad he isn't chairman of the All-American team. I'd have one vote. I'm very pleased to be with you. Some of my very favorite people. I mean that very sincerely. The last two months have been unusual for BYU students and friends because Every Tuesday morning now, you can, uh, and for the past two months, you can uh, phone and ask the television station or the radio stations or the newspapers, what is BYU's ranking? Just before coming down here today, I said to my secretary, phone up and find out what BYU's ranking is. I didn't even mention the word football, and she came back and said they're number four in the nation. Well, that displeases me. I thought they'd be number three or better. <clears throat> Again, I don't have the votes. I'd like to just pause long enough to say to be ranked number three or four in the nation in football is an unusual achievement. And I commend Coach Edwards and his associates and all of the participants. As last Saturday, they wrapped up their ninth consecutive WAC championship. I understand that college football teams are ranked according to how many points they score, how many points are scored against them, who they play, and uh, what is the status or ability of those who are opponents. I suppose that some weeks some coaches are frustrated by what those are in authority do to choose ranked teams. When they're disappointed, they must think that the color of the uniform has something to do with it. But I'm not here today to uh, quarrel with those who put out the rankings. I'm here today to talk about two words, remember and rank. Perhaps at this time of the season, the best pep talk that BYU coaches could give their football players would be in the form of a sign in the locker room with just one word on the sign, remember. Remember what you've been taught. Remember it takes total individual commitment to the team effort to make a team work. Remember self-pride and self-discipline. Remember no team is better than the performers who comprise it. Remember no player is worth much who thinks he's more important than the team. Remember you won't maintain a high ranking unless you remember. I hope that when you, some of your friends who aren't here today ask you what Elder Ta Ashton talked about, please don't say, I don't remember. <laughs> remember words of phrase and high rating are damaging if they dull your memory remember as a participant I am to be a class person on a class team remember is defined as to retain in mind and keep carefully in memory for our purpose today, rank is defined as the degree of worth or excellence and taking precedence over others in the same category. I believe, my friends, that the best educated student or faculty member is the person who learns much, shares much, and remembers to implement the worthy in his or her life. During the recently held October conference, we as members of the church were encouraged to read and reread the Book of Mormon. I think supplementary counsel could well be read and reread the Book of Mormon and remember what you read and how you feel. Train yourselves 
to remember as you go along so there will not be a need to cram in the classroom or to cram in life. Following this counsel of reading and rereading the Book of Mormon, I was impressed the other day in reading the Book of Helaman. I was greatly impressed with the emphasis that Helaman in talking to his sons Nehi and Lehi about the importance of remembering. The people of his time had success when they remembered his teachings. They failed when they forgot. Recall this to memory, if you will. You've read it many times, but perhaps with remember in mind, it'll have a new impact. Quote from Helaman 5, verse 6. Behold, my sons, I desire that you should remember to keep the commandments of God. And I would that you should declare unto the people these words. Behold, I have given you the name of our first parents who came out of the land of Jerusalem. And this I have done, that when you remember your names, ye may remember them. And when ye remember them, ye may remember their works. And when ye remember their works, ye may know how that it is said, and also written, that they were good. Helaman gave his sons the name of Nephi and Lehi, so they would remember their first parent, first parents what they stood for and what they did, so that every time they'd hear their names, they could refer back to those stalwarts who preceded them. Remember and honor their great names, he pleaded. Remember them because they were good, he emphasized. Helaman's sons gained strength and high rating as they remembered. Teachers do students a great favor when they not only encourage them to study, but to retain and remember. Only when we remember and apply the worthy are we truly educated. An important part of true education is remembering people whose conduct help us to do better. They are lights on dark days. They give direction when life's paths become cluttered. With this in mind, let me share five friends who rank very high with me. I will be most pleased if you remember them and what they teach. Three of them are on this campus. One is affiliated with another campus 40 miles or so to the north. We won't mention the name. <laughs> they will not be identified for privacy reasons. The fourth conduct has been a constant example of stability even before the gospel of Jesus Christ was restored in this last dispensation. Obviously, these five are not ranked in order. Number one, Mary Jones. Not her real name. A relatively unknown, unranked student body member of BYU. She is here. She is a returned missionary. I first met her in the mission field a few years ago. After shaking her hand and greeting her with her companion, I said, how are things going? She said, pretty well. And when missionaries tell me things are going pretty well, I know they're not going very well. And I said, is there something I could help you with? And she said, oh, no. I." Everything's pretty well. And I said, tell me what's keeping it from being very well. She said, well, with her chin quivering and responding at my insistence, she said, uh, I've been in the mission field three months. I've been a member of the church for one year. During the three months I've been in the mission field, I have not had one letter from anyone. When I joined the church, my parents disowned me. They want nothing to do with me. Elder Ashton, what can I do? The only thing I could think to suggest to her at that time was, even though your parents have disowned you and won't write to you, do me a favor and write them every week. 
right without fail, right without response, right without feelings. She's home from remission, attending school here, doing very well. Just the other day, she greeted me with nothing unusual. She just said, Elder Ashton, I want you to know my mom and my dad are writing me. Therefore, cheer up your hearts and remember that you're free to act for yourselves to choose the way of eternal life. As Mary Jones will continue to improve her personal rating as she remembers to act and not react. Number two, a friend of mine and a friend of yours, Hiram Smith, the older brother of a prophet, faithful in all ways. I like to study and read about Hiram Smith because he rated very, very high with his Heavenly Father. We have an opportunity to be ranked high in the kingdom of God and on earth if we'll do the same. Simply stated in the 124 section of the Doctrine and Covenants. And again, very I say unto you, blessed is my servant Hiram Smith. For I, the Lord, love him because of the integrity of his heart, and because he loveth that which is right before me, saith the Lord. The Lord loves men and women. The Lord loves students, if they're people of integrity, who love that which is right. In football terms, Joseph Smith was a captain and quarterback. Hiram was strong on defense. It is significant that at the time of the martyrdom of the Prophet Joseph Smith in Carthage Jail, on June 27, 1844, this great defender, this tremendous friend of the Savior, Hiram, was shot first and fell calmly saying, I'm a dead man. Let us remember why Hiram ranks high. He remembered to love that which is right. He loved the right and his brother more than life itself. Number three, Mary Smith. Not her real name. Also a relatively unknown campus member. Unranked, pretty much unknown but one of her older Ashton's special friends because of what she teaches me. She's on campus today a little older than some of you. Her education was delayed while she and a widowed mother put a brother and a son through this institution and through a mission. Maybe her chances for the pleasures of courtship and marriage will be delayed at the best. She's the kind of a gal I like to remember because she's willing to put others first and take her chances as she walks uprightly before her Heavenly Father with priorities that are firm and with goals that are lofty. Humbly she goes forward, not passively, but humbly. No one knows her story. I do, and I hope I'll never forget it. Could I tie into that a statement from Alma, 38th, ver 38th chapter, the 14th verse? Do not say, O oh God, I thank thee that we are better than our brethren, but rather say, O oh Lord, forgive my unworthiness, and remember my brethren in mercy. Yea, acknowledge your worthiness before God at all times. I'd just like to say in passing that Mary is one of the most selfless people I can remember. Number four. Let's identify number four as, as Harry. Another person I remember and always want to. 
Last week I went to the hospital to visit my friend Harry. He's slowly recovering from heart surgery that involved five bypasses. Despite great discomfort and distress physically, when I saw him, his attitude was excellent. During our visit, he reached through the sheets and tubes and took my hand and said, Marv, say a prayer for me, will you please? While I prayed, he strongly gripped my hand. His grip was more than strong. It was powerful. Why? In normal life, Harry walks with his hands and arms. He's been confined to a wheelchair for dozens of years. His mobility is determined by his hands and by his friends. Harry and his wife Margaret will always be remembered by me as two very best friends. Every time I talk to them, I get a new lift for life. I remember Harry when I need courage. I remember him when I'm inclined to be discouraged. I wasn't going to identify Harry, but I think I will. He's the head tennis coach at the University of Utah. He's won enough whack tennis titles to tempt other whack coaches to buy a wheelchair and try to coach from there. Number five, this won't be very popular with one person, but it's not too important to me whether I'm invited down here again. <clears throat> Number five, President Jeffrey R. Holland ranks high, very high on my rating list because, number one, he remembers to promote excellence in every academic department of BYU within the framework of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number two, he remembers to enforce lofty standards of conduct for all on the campus so that they may develop self-discipline, self-respect, and self-reliance. Some of you may resist and resent, but I promise you as you mature, you'll bless his name for enforcing lofty standards. Number three, President Holland rates high with me because he remembers to listen and counsel without prejudice even when he doesn't have time. Number four, he remembers to administer with love and purpose when some would provoke him to anger. Number five, he remembers when disappointments and discouragement surface to choose hope over despair. Number six, he remembers the importance of smiling, particularly on days when it would be easier to cry. He remembers, number seven, to love and court his wife and sweetheart, Pat, with sincere affection and respect on a steady basis. Number eight, he remembers the importance of taking time to be a good father. Family members, Matt, Mary, and Duffy, are not just children on the squad, they are the heart of the team. And President Holland and Pat remember to take the time to tell them so. Number nine, and I hope you'll pay particular interest to this, smile if you like or be informed. 
Number nine, he remembers when he is my doubles partner in tennis, he has to do most of the work. Number 10, he remembers to share his strong personal testimony in words similar to those spoken by Helaman. And now, my sons, remember, remember, it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ the Son of God, that you must build your foundation. Close quote. Let me share with you one more friend. We don't even know his name. Nevertheless, I would have us all remember him. And now behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. He said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave him to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come back, I will repay thee. Which now of these thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy unto him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. How powerful in the processes of learning are good lives. The good Samaritan, we don't even know his name, but what a lesson, what an example. Fellow students, I would humbly ask all of you within the sound of my voice to do me a special favor. Put a sign on your wall, on your desk, or fasten one to the mirror. Just let it have one word. The word is remember. I promise you today without any hesitation. If you do that, it will help you in your ranking with yourself and with your God. Remember BYU football players who get knocked down but won't stay there. Remember the Savior. He is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Redeemer, our Advocate and Friend with the Father. Remember this morning that, and someone must need to hear this, I do, he said, among other truths, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Remember the worth of souls is great in the sight of the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. I hope you believe that. That's the kind of a Savior that I believe in. If we repent, if we remember him, the 
things that we have done will not be remembered by him. Remember God lives. Remember God loves you. Remember to pray to him frequently. Remember you as his children are special. What is your reward? What is my reward? For those of us who would rank high with the Lord and do rank high with him, what is our reward? Remember this. Verily thus saith the Lord, it shall come to pass that every soul who forsaketh his sins and cometh unto me and calleth on my name and obeyeth my voice and keepeth my commandments shall see my face and know that I am. In conclusion, what is BYU's ranking? What is your personal ranking? I thank God this morning that only we can determine that. It isn't up to someone else. We are what we are, regardless of how we're identified or what we're called. We set our own ranking. Remember, oh remember, the Church of Jesus Christ is true. Remember, with God's help, we can know and share good cheer and happiness now and in all the days ahead. Remember, today is a new beginning. Today is a new opportunity. I bear you my testimony and share my witness that one of the greatest values and the greatest strength in my life is to not only read and to know the Savior, but to remember what he taught and remember who he is. I leave you this my testimony and my blessings in the worthy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.